This video is brought to you as a public service by Salty Live. SaltyLive.com, producer of instructional, commercial, and personal videos. Thursday night at White County Historical Society, um, John Pruitt, who many of you probably remember if you ever watched WSB TV or WXIA TV, will be the speaker at the Historical Society. He's coming to tell us about some of the things that he did as a uh, a commentator or whatever, anchorman and that type of thing. So everybody's invited to come out 7.30 Thursday <coughs> night Historical Society and welcome John Pruitt. Well, Miss Judy, I'd love to be there. So we, have some, we got some eating events that night. I know the Rotary Raffles that night. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're out of order. <laughs> we, we still have some tickets to sell. <laughs> Can we solicit from the pulpit? I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, folks, we're going to uh, hold on. Before we get started, Commissioner Bryant uh, should be here at any moment. Um, I want to, uh, I do, uh, laying all jokes aside, I am going to uh, be respectful. Um, I want to change our agenda up real quick, and I think, hopefully, you'll understand in just a moment. I'm going to, if you don't have a copy of our agenda, we do have co extra copies up here on the table. Um, let me start off officially. This is a work session for the White County Board of Commissioners, and today is Monday. Um, October 30th. I've actually got 4:32 p.m. And what we do uh, here in our work sessions, we actually go up business matters in the county. Uh, we discuss them, uh, as well as I do have a couple of public hearings we'll be conducting tonight. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to kind of ask questions. And and over the next week or so, we can be back here a week from tonight and uh, we'll officially vote on some of these matters a week from tonight, or this afternoon a week from, at 4.30. Uh, but I'm going to change the agenda up, and uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a presentation of a proclamation in honor of the Georgia Retired Educators Day, which is uh, um, Sunday, November the 5th, 2017. And uh, I'm going to read that, and if we would, uh, I know we've got several retired educators uh, with us this evening. Uh, if, we, if you'd be okay, so inclined, if we could get a picture with you all. And I'd like to stand by Miss Hunt, since it's her birthday. <laughs> if, that, if that would be agreeable. Miss Hunt just turned 90, is that correct, Miss Hunt? You don't want me to, I should have said that out loud. <laughs> but happy birthday. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, proclamation by the White County Board of Commissioners, whereas the governor of the state of Georgia has proclaimed the day of Sunday, November the 5th, 2017, as Retired Educators Day in Georgia. And whereas there are more than 110,000 uh, retired educators in Georgia, 27,000 and more of who are members of the Georgia Retired Educators Association. And whereas retired educators in Georgia donate thousands of hours in volunteer service and make invaluable contributions to the welfare of their respective communities across the state. And whereas the retired educators devote their time in put, uh, excuse me, putting emphasis on fellowship, service, and support. Whereas it is appropriate that a day be designated for the citizens to express their appreciation and the contributions <coughs> that retired educators have made and continue to make for the betterment of human lives and for society. And whereas community organizations will recognize those lasting contributions made by retired educators in this community. Now therefore, the White County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim that November 5th, 2017 is Retired Educators Day in White County. And this, the Board of Commissioners also calls upon the citizens of White County to observe this day in an appropriate matter, manner by honoring retired educators. That's signed by all five commissioners <coughs> on this board. And would it 
can we get a picture with you guys as we present this to you? We would appreciate that. And thank you for your service, all of you. We miss you guys in school. I can go ahead and tell you that. So. <laughs> Come on down. If you don't mind, take my glasses off. Sorry. Come on in. It's about you guys. <laughs> Closer. Closer. Close to you. Wow. That's all right. All right. We'll start with uh, Debbie. Ladies first. You got the cake. Yeah. Want anybody to be in? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bill will have us on fetch your news. Dot com. Smile pretty. There you go. Thank you, Rock. <laughs> agenda. We do have two public hearings we will be conducting this evening and I'll give you kind of a, a synopsis of how these will operate. Um, first I'll be asking our staff to give a brief synopsis of the application. Secondly I'll ask the representative or the applicant to speak as to their desires for and their reasoning for the reclassification or rezoning and then third I'll open the floor up for um, give those who are here in support of the application as well as give an opportunity those who happen to be here in opposition or uh, to issue any concern regarding the application and I'll give uh, each one of those ample time um, in the if we have multiple speakers please try to keep the comments uh, to around three minutes um, if for some reason we have no comments, whether it's in uh, support or opposition, uh, we do have a standard practice now that uh, I'll issue three calls. Um, and all these are just uh, formal things we have to go through, but we have to make sure our T's are crossed and I's are dotted. And then lastly, we will close. And um, uh, then, like I said a little while ago, uh, after these public hearings, a week from tonight or this afternoon, we'll be having a voting meeting at 4.30. And at that time, I'll be asking the board uh, what is their desires uh, regarding these uh, requests. So having said all that, I've, I've spoken enough. Um, let's move on. Uh, item one, our agenda, I conduct a public <coughs> hearing for the land use application, excuse me, filed by Mr. Felix E. Love to request a conditional use permit at 55 Mill Creek Trail, Cleveland, Georgia, 30528, tax map and parcel 018-011, total acreage is 2.75 acres, and proposed use is to place a single family residence in a for rent by owner program. Present use is R1, which is residential single family district. At this time, Mr. John Sell, John, if you want pull that thing a little further back, that way you might not be quite so intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> you, us to you, not, not you to us. So. Uh, anyway, go ahead. John would give us, uh, for those who know, John 
is our uh, planning and economic director for White County. John's been with us now about a month ish. Yes. Um, and uh, John comes to us by way of uh, Georgia Power. Um, so uh, we're pleased to have John on board and he has jumped in with both feet. And um, uh, so far, he's ca he came back every single week since we hired him. So this is a big good sign. <laughs> so, you know, John, uh, give us a brief synopsis of our application. Okay, um, this is the application for Felix Ela. The property is in an R1 district and will require a conditional use permit from White County Board of Commissioners. The property adjoins R1 residential single family district on the north, south, and east side, and A1 agricultural forestry district to the west. Proposed use adjoins Mill Creek Trail and Mill Lane. The White County Comprehensive Plan and Future Land Use Map indicates single family residential. The total acreage is 2.75 acres. The property is supplied with well and septic tank. The Planning Commission recommends not to approve the conditional use permit. All right. Gentlemen, do you have any questions for Mr. Sale to begin with? All right. Having none. Uh, Mr. Love? Would you come on down and uh, you know, that's contested on the price is right, I guess. But uh, um, give us kind of what your plans are, where you're going with the property, and so on. Um, first, before I get to that, uh, Frank and Martha Singville taught me in high school at Forest Park. So, right. <laughs> um, I bought the property with the intent of reselling. I thought that it was valued more than than uh, that I paid for. Uh, while I'm waiting for someone to cough up half a million dollars, uh, I was going to rent it out because it's such a fantastic property to rent out. I had a friend that did that. Um, I don't think there would have been any problem, but I got a, and we were paying the taxes and doing all the things we were supposed to do. But I got a call saying that I needed to do this, you know, get a land use permit. <clears throat> um, I also live in a neighborhood. I don't want the rules to be changed any more than anyone else who supposedly my opposition wants the rules to be changed. And I'm sure that's why we recommended that we not do this. And that doesn't upset me in the least. I'm asking permission, however, to continue to rent it until I sell it, which is which could be tomorrow, and there is a lot of interest in it, which could be tomorrow, and it could be a couple of months from now. Uh, that's as succinct as I can make it, so we won't have to be here any longer. All right, All right gentlemen, do uh, you have any questions for Mr. Love? I got, I got one. I noticed that uh, as the uh, president of the Homeowners Association out there that uh, in July that you had uh, had written a letter to Mr. and Ms. Booth about a similar situation where they were wanting to rent. Uh, yes, that's that's exactly right. He's my next door neighbor, and uh, we didn't expect to get any. any uh, we were actually trying to see how much authority we had to, to stop this sort of thing, and not wanting to be some sort of policeman. Or, or we, we wrote the letter. I wrote the letter. I composed it and wrote the letter. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, John. And so now you're going to do this. And right, and if, if, if I were the president, I guess I would have to write myself a letter saying, listen, don't do that. Right. But that's what we did. We said, don't do that. And he still, he continues to do it. Whoever Mr. Booth is, he continues well, to do it. Well, you have, you have covenants in your homeowners association. Yes, and there, so we were using. Everyone expects that to be adhered to, to protect their own. Right, I understand that. And I wasn't a very good president, I admit. I was, I was lazy. The president we have now is, is top notch. I don't know if she's had Mr. Booth uh, stop what he's doing or not. I know there's another person in the complex who's doing it too. Um, it's it's a it's a problem. It is what it is. That is they say. My question is: Is it weekend rental or permanent rental? To it's weekend? not permanent rental. Actually, permanent rental is allowed. And and if I wanted to rent the property, but I, I don't want to put somebody so in there. So you're going to do out. weekend rentals to tourists? Okay? Pretty much, yeah. And, and during Can the you say that's going stuff. on now? And so it is going on right now. Are they paying so, hotel motel tax? And do they yes, that, that was the whole point of me being here was they wanted to make sure that I was paying the hotel motel tax. 
I'm renting through another company, and the, and the company Pinnacle Cabin Rooms is paying the hotel motel taxes. Well, I guess my question, and this is not pertaining to you, while it's fresh on my mind, I'm at that age that I forget pretty quick as to our staff. Do these people that are doing this in this subdivision, are they licensed with a business to do that? And are we collecting hotel motel tax off of those that are doing it now? Therein lies the problem with vacation rentals when these management companies um, manage and rent multiple properties. When you receive their checks for hotel motel tax, you do not know what specific properties that is from. And if, if some of y'all will recall back a few years ago, we tried to require that they obtain that information and provide that to us. And that was something that, that they objected to and, and the board did not require them to provide it at that time. But these uh, management companies, we get a check, we get a form, we don't know what properties they're for. Well, that's not pertaining to what we're here for now. I don't want to get sidetracked, but I don't want this board to forget what we've just talked about in the future. Well, while we're on that, that pinnacle, is that, are they here in White County or are they over in Hammersham County? Or do you know? Um, I, I think they're in Hammersham County, okay. but they're, they forgot 52 cabins and a lot of them are in White County, I'm sure. And so they're, yeah, they that's licensed. a question they I can't answer. They do have a business license with White County. They do? Does, yes. Okay. But I, I was sure really about it. get a sidetrack. It's just yeah, when, when people start That's actually the question that brought me here was well, whether or not I would do the right thing by the tax tourists, then it kind of, we always think if, if you've got tourist accommodations and there should be, you know, well, they should have a business license for that. And if it is a management company that's doing it, then they probably do have that license. But it, it's uh, our responsibility to make sure that those properties are where we're collecting hotel motel tax off of those properties, too. Mr. Love, I will make a comment. Uh, the property up there is beautiful. I mean, it, you, it, it's, it, it's one of the top, as far as Absolutely. aesthetics go, it's a little piece of property, back and back. Um, and if gentlemen you have any more comments for Mr. Love, I'm gonna allow him to sit down unless you have any more questions at this moment. No, I'm doing okay. Mr. Love, feel free to sit down and we'll open the floor up in just a Thank moment. You. Uh, this is my question to staff. Um, uh, special uh, condition, uh, conditional use permit. Uh, are we suggesting this go to an R3? What are we suggesting this go to or just a special condition? Conditional use permit. It would stay R1. It would just be a special use permit under R1, which is allowed under the ordinance. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. What we're going to do now, we'll open up the floor. Uh, this is the public hearing section. Um, I'll open the floor. Like I said a little while ago, first, those in support of the application, and then I'll allow uh, the floor to be opened up for those uh, who have concerns and/or are uh, opposed. To the application uh, when i when you come up if you will state your name and your address for the record we've got to get all this stuff uh on the register so um if i ask you that there's a reason why so at this time i'm going to open the floor up is there anyone uh, in the audience who would like to speak in support of the application and if there is I'll, again i'll get you to come to the podium as we've done before if you're unable we can push the podium a little closer to you it's mobile so all right i'll ask a second time uh, is there anyone who'd like to speak in support all right and last but not least to a third uh, third attempt is there anyone who'd like to speak in support okay I'll close the floor on the uh, supportive side. Now we're going to move to the, I'm going to say opposition and or those who have concerns. <coughs> if you'll raise your hand, I'll get to you as quick as I can. And if you'll come to the podium, uh, Miss Michelle, I saw you first. And if you'll come on down, just give us your address, Miss Michelle. Michelle Johnson, I live at 431 Goldsman Way. All right. And first of all, I want to say I, I understand what Mr. Love is wanting to do. And I sympathize with the situation. And it would seem like just the allowing a short period of time wouldn't be that big an issue. Except that, I, I think that if you approve one such of these situations, that there would be more to follow, and therein would lie the problem. Um, 
first of all, I think this situation isn't unlike the concerns that the county had that led to passing the Mountain Protection Act as an example because we wanted to avoid conditions that would lead to the unsightly appearance of what was happening and is and continues to happen in the Hawassi area like <coughs> mountain sides up there. Similarly, most of the residents in Adair Mill property owners um, want to avoid conditions that could lead to a Helen slash Chattahoochee type tubing craze and the influx of short time renters that you could see tubing down Town Creek, which has been seen already from this rental. As a matter of fact, the the nearest neighbor to this rental um, has already had disturbances reporting at 3 a.m. in the morning with people tubing in front of her property <coughs> on Town Creek and making um, noise and disturbances. And, and I understand that she really had not contacted Mr. Love. I'm sure he would have done something about it, but she didn't want to get into any arguments. But it has already happened. Also, I think um, a few years back, when there was a property owner who decided to build a waste spray field on his property, uh, is a similar situation to this. Fortunately, the county saw that that was an infringement on the rights of his neighbors. And um, while, while it wasn't um, something that we could handle uh, with the referendum, it wasn't a referendum, uh, the ordinance that was passed, uh, you were able to um, stop that activity. Uh, many of the residents in the Deer Mill community are retirees who were attracted to this property because of its protected covenants and peaceful setting. I know I was, we were. Uh, they have spent a considerable portion of their retirement funds to build their full-time forever homes here. And they pay significant taxes and are active citizens of the county and they hope to be valued in, <coughs> in that county policy. This case is about one property, but it will set a precedent that will surely affect other properties in our community. And there are others who would take any approval of this request as a green light to pursue uh, short-term rentals and businesses among these residences. That concludes my comments. Um, if you would allow me to, I have a letter from a property owner who was not able to be here today and it's just a brief letter if you would allow me to read it. And if you could leave a copy of that. I, I, this is your copy. Right. This is from Cindy Bailey who lives on Mill Creek Trail. I don't know what the number is. Um, this is to White County Board of Commissioners. Please accept this written request as my sincere objection to Mr. Love's conditional use permit from the current residential use only R1 status. As a new resident and homeowner of White County, I applaud the board's decision to adopt a land use plan and protect property owners' investments. This and the fact that I was presented the Adair Mill homeowners' covenants upon purchase of our property is the reason I felt confident in choosing to purchase the land in the Adair Mill community and build our new home. Unfortunately, I have lived in a neighborhood where property values decline due to such variances. As a result of declining property values, the tax base declined as well. Therefore, I ask you to take these facts into consideration in making your decision. Mr. Love wants his conditional use until he can flip the investment property at 55 Mill Creek Trail. Once once such uses are granted, it becomes easier for potential new variances to be granted. I ask you to protect not only mine, but every homeowner's investment in the Dairy Mill community by honoring our covenants and maintaining the residential use only status of our neighborhood. Thank you, Michelle. That was from Doris. Thank you. No, that was Cindy Bay. All right, Michelle, I'll give this to you to the meeting for public record. All right. Thank you, Ms. Michelle. All right. Another hand. Come on down.
Yeah, I'm Carolyn Miller, 1167 Mill Creek Trail. Um, I'm also president of the Ader Mill Property Owners Association. Uh, a lot of us have difficulty with this request, and some of what has been said already, I will skip because I'm not going to duplicate everything. Uh, I just wanted you to know that the covenants of our association, along with all the other Adair Mill subdivisions, um, approve of nothing but single family residences. That's how the property is to be used. And it goes along with what you people have decided for the land use programs. And we're hoping that you're going to stick to your guns there. <laughs> In 2004, in July, our association, by um, <clears throat> quick claim deeds, acquired the park, community park, which butts up against this property that we're talking about. Um, it, we did it mainly because it was not being cared for. Even though everyone in Adair Mill is available to use it, and nothing was ever done with it, so we took it over. We have since paid to have it maintained. We pay the taxes on it. It is a private park. It is not a community park to be used by renters. That's one of our concerns. Another concern we have is, of course, the property values, which you've heard Cindy Bailey is concerned with as well. Uh, we also discovered that in our neighborhood at the moment, we have one widower and three, four widows, three of whom live close proximity to this property. We're concerned with the fact that these people should not feel afraid to remain in their homes just because they don't know who's wandering around the neighborhood. They've been through enough changes in their life they should be allowed to stay put and feel comfortable with the neighborhood. Another thing we're concerned with is the peace, quiet, security, and privacy that we have been enjoying for almost 20 years. Most of us built our homes here as retirement homes because it was away from hustle and bustle. We knew who was living there. We knew the people that built there. We knew that if they were financially able to build there, they were going to be decent people that we wanted to be associated with. One of the things that bothers me the most is that a lot of these people that come to rent for a day or two, or even a week or two, don't notice that our private roads are labeled as 25 mile an hour speed limits. We have a lot of people that walk these roads. There's a lot of animals that wander around and we want our speed limit kept low so no, there's no accidents or problems. They also do not know that most of us do not hold ruckus and loud parties because it's Friday or Saturday night. We also do not leave litter on the sides of our roads and none of us leave our garbage outside for the bears to come and rustle through. We really want this neighborhood to remain as is. We do not want strangers. We do not want people that come and go at their leisure. We've seen people stop at the corner near our house in the middle of the night, parked in their cars wondering which way to turn because they forgot where they were going. It's a wonder we haven't called the sheriff more frequently. But people wandering through our neighborhood this way just is not acceptable. And we do hope that you will see our point. We do feel sorry for Mr. Love. He's gotten himself into a position that he can't get out of, but things happen. We should not have to give up our rights because he made a mistake. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. I had a question for Ms. Miller. Right <coughs> uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, let's wait for the, wait for the end. Um, all right, is there anyone else who has any comments, uh, concerns uh, regarding the application? All right. 
going once. I have to be careful. I don't, I don't want to prolong something just for the sake of prolonging um, uh, in these public hearings. All right. Uh, second call. All right. Third call. Okay. Uh, public hearing set. Public hearing section is officially closed. Uh, at this moment, the chair will recognize Commissioner Goodger. Is Commissioner Goodger. Yeah, I have a question for uh, Ms. Miller right there. Uh, I understand that there's other people that are have vacation rentals out there. We believe so, but we have no definite proof. No, no proof. So, are you doing anything to see about uh, getting them? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm are you doing any? Are you are you being <coughs> proactive to get that taken care of, or to? Are you doing I, I, well, what is? Yeah. Are you? What? What? What he's asking oh, is: you. Are you we looking did, for? Any? We did call the um, planning committee and let them know that there was someone next to Mr. Love that was doing. In fact, I think that's rented more frequently. Of course, I know it because I'm right up the street, so I get the noise. But yes, that's we tried that, and I don't know what came of it. These people bought the house about two years ago. They reside in Florida. I've never met them, never seen them at a meeting. I wouldn't know them if I tripped over them. I think they bought it strictly to rent. It's not a very great house, but it was great for rental. That's all we've done. Especially when your covenants, uh, when they bought the house, they got a copy of the covenant so they knew what the covenant said that that wasn't allowed or they should have known that that was not allowed okay. Okay. Didn't hear. gentlemen do you have any other questions or comments hear you. oh i'm sorry you might he was wondering if they were given the covenants when they bought the house oh i'm sure they were um i can't be positive but generally the realtors and people the lawyers that are closing these houses contact us for that and make sure that they do get a copy um i've taken care of that job a long time but i don't remember getting a request for this particular owner mm -hmm. but he was one of the original owners in fact helps <laughs> help set up our association very aware of the covenants but it doesn't help much. Yeah. A lot of people know that the covenants haven't been enforced that well, so they don't think about it. Well, one thing we have to be careful as a body, you know, it's not the county's job to enforce <coughs> your private uh, covenants. That's not our role. Our role, uh, but does catch our ear is when we have seasonal rentals that are participating and not paying. You know, what's right. good for the goose is good for the gander. Sure. Okay. I think you know what I mean by that. So we did send out a registered letter to this person, and it came back. Never got a response from them. They, I do know they pay their dues every year, but other than that, I don't know. All right. Like to. <laughs> Any other comments? Okay. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Love, to kind of get, like I said a little while ago, just to reiterate, uh, this body will come back together a week from today, 4:30, and uh, at that time it'll be the official uh, voting meeting, and uh, I'll ask, uh, you know, what the board's pleasure, a to it could be a to approve, decline, or if there's additional questions, it could be tabled. So I'm just trying to give you a little bit of insight, um, but uh, thank you. All right. All right, uh, let's close and item item number one. Um, we're going to move on to item number two. And if you would like to leave, uh, now would be the time. I'll wait just a moment just so we won't have a... You're welcome to stay. I mean, I, I don't want you to feel like we're pushing you out. Uh, you have the legal right to hang out with us if you'd like. <laughs> Okay. All right, item two in our agenda, conduct a public hearing for the land use application filed by Mr. Uh, Jason Chester and Sonia Chester to redistrict property located at 2836 Gitsmountain Road, Cleveland, 30528 from a 
C1, which is Community Commercial District, to an R1, Residential Single Family District. That's tax max 065-097. Total acreage is 8.24. Current use for the entire track is C1 Community Commercial. Uh, Mr. Sell, you have the hill. Okay, again, this application is to request uh, to consider changing the zoning district from C1 Community Commercial to R1 Residential Single Family District. Property street address is 2836 Skip Mountain Road in Cleveland. Total acreage is 8.24 acres. Property adjoins R1 Residential District to east and the west, A1 Agricultural Forestry District to the south, and C1 Community Commercial District to the north. The White County Comprehensive Plan future land use map show this area as agricultural and low density housing. Property is supplied by well and septic tank and the Planning Commission uh, voted to approve this rezoning to R1 single family residential. All right, any questions at this moment for Mr. Sale? All right, have it in for Mr. Sale, thank you. Uh, Ms. Chester, come on down. <laughs> Ms. Chester, um, uh, applicant. Uh, Ms. Chester, share with the group what you guys are up to. Okay, so we purchased the property. It was actually 10 acres. It was all zoned R1, and so we had it divided into an eight acre track to be rezoned as residential, and then the two acre track would just be left as commercial. It actually has a, they use it as a business as it is right now, but we plan on living in the house. So that's it. All right. Any questions? All right. No, I, I think it was, it was pretty simple. It was pretty simple. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, you're 10 and 11 acres, total, total track. Mm -hmm. You're going to divide that eight acres or so with the house yes. and leave the commercial as the commercial building. Right. Um, all right. And there's multiple uh, surge. They're on the residential eight acre property, there is an additional, I think they had trailers behind the house. So there is septics up there, is that what you're asking? Well, oh. I'm asking if for the building and the commercial part that's gonna be separated, will it have its own? Yes, sir. It, it, ha it, it has now its own? Yes, sir, it has its own septic tank and everything. Okay. Um, and I went through with Sean to identify all that as well. Okay, so both properties, just to make clear, has, will have its own septic system. And it meets codes, my understanding, by the package. All right. Any other questions? Okay. That's it on that part. Uh, I'm going to be redundant here. Uh, same scenario. Open the floor up for those in support. Uh, and I'll open the floor up for those in who have concerns <coughs> and who are opposed to the request. Uh, so open the floor up for those. If there's anyone in the audience, raise your hand if you're here in support of the application. First call. Okay, I ask a second time. Uh, I just have a question. Can someone define what community commercial means? What, mm -hmm. what, is, what constitutes community commercial? Yep. Definition community commercial. It's low intensity commercial as opposed to highway commercial, which is high intensity commercial. Low traffic area. Simple to sit, simple. All right. That's a simple definition, right? Would you like that? Uh, they'll be glad, Debbie, to forward the entire subsection if you'd like. I mean, all right. Third call. Once, twice, three times. All right. We'll close that section. Uh, if you have concerns or are opposed, uh, raise your hand. I'll get to you in the same manner. First call. Second call. Girls, did y'all raise your hand? <laughs> that was a joke. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Miss Chester's uh, daughters are out in the lobby doing a great job, and I'm just having a little fun. So all's good. It's just trying to make light of this, not in a bad way. But um, uh, third call. Okay, Miss Shanda, if you'll note the record. Uh, we offered three calls and uh, no one uh, has chosen to speak and with concerns and or were opposed. All right, we'll close that section. Gentlemen, do you have any additional questions uh, for staff or Ms. Chester? No, I'll open the floor up for 
most of our neighbors that have had any problem that done a call. <laughs> She's in Rogersville. <laughs> yeah, you're in Rogersville. I'm related to most of the people around here. <laughs> All right. All right. Ms. Chester, and I think you heard before, as we spoke earlier, uh, we today at 430, we'll have a uh, voting meeting. Uh, if you, your husband could be here, just in case there were to be any additional questions, uh, I'll ask the pleasure of the board at that time. And that's next week. That's next, next week, week, week okay. from today. Okay. 430. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank Bye, you. girls. <laughs>
and uh, we also have some problems with that in that uh, uh, Edwin and I had gone out and looked and there's about where is it about 1600 feet through there that needs to be opened there's about yeah they've been around I think it's more like 1200 feet yeah, right. and there was about five or six hundred feet of that that was in woods the rest of it was out in the open and that property does belong to the school board yeah, yeah. and so we so yeah, so the bridge the bridge the bridge from the bridge, from the bridge the sports sports complex. and so you know a, a lot of things would have to be worked out with the school board there so I, I, I look at that as probably not happening until next year's program but but that would be my second one, and then uh, Henry Nix would be my third choice at Far Road. So, uh, well, and, and one thing I'd like to do tonight, if we, when we come out of this, from each district, you know, like we've done before historically, uh, come up with a couple of roads from each district, and we'll ask staff to go out, uh, obtain bids, uh, so that we'll know what kind of dollars we're looking at before we, you know, go completely. That's what we're done. We'll get a price. Then yeah. we pull that what we can, what we can. So, I guess, Terry, if I, yeah. correct, yeah. am I hearing go pricing Blue Creek? Blue, I do Blue Creek first, and let's just see what the, how that goes. If that if that doesn't get on this year, I, we probably would have to go to Henry next. Okay. Because I don't see the other one happening for a couple of years. And why don't we uh, back on the Claude Sims situation? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we all have concerns to be an opportunity to open up some through way uh, through there. We've got to work with the school board right. uh, before that. Over the next few months that we start with us, our staff, start working with the school board mm -hmm. and see if that can't be done. Well, I think we need to put the city in there too. I mean, you know, we've all talked all three of because it would benefit the city as much as it would the school. The school bus is not having to go all the way around. Mm -hmm. They got all the traffic coming through downtown every morning. Mm -hmm. You know, and I spoke to them, like all of us, I, I think it would benefit, you know, if all three of us could get together and sit down, we're all good splash money. I don't think county should have to open it all the way up to push to put the whole bill. That's just my opinion. So, you know, we talk, you know we've, we've talked about this before, just getting everybody on board. We talked about it a couple of years ago, you know, when Kathy Thompson was there, mm -hmm. the school bus, there was a lot of concern with the bypass coming in, mm -hmm. the safety of the school buses traveling back and forth, how that would. Yeah, too, so. Well, one of the problems are is we've got two schools, one on each side, got yeah. a dead end road at each school. Yeah. So to me, that that's a safety issue, and that is a, a problem, especially the daycare being down on the little road that it's on right there. Mm -hmm. There's only one way in and one way out. Yeah. So. Yeah, the head start down there has been a concern for yeah. mine oh, for. I guess the last 10 years, yeah. if they ever had an emergency down there, and you, you know, you, there's only one way in and one way out. You know? That's what I say, it would benefit all three entries. Sure. Really. Well, as we had conversations earlier, you know, if the school board is on board with this, how um, friendly are the idea? Because once, if we do this, that road's got to be a public road, public yeah. road through way 24 7. Yeah. You can't put a gate on it. Yeah, so exactly. That's, these are questions we'll have to yeah, answer. I think from some of the conversations that we've had, that seems to be a, agreeable. Yeah. I don't think we've got any issues. It would be at the closest year, Joe, wouldn't you talk about it? <laughs> yeah, we won't bring that back up right now. We won't bring it back up. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry. Uh, Old Blue Creek Road. Mm -hmm. All right. And. Then we'll see how that comes in. If that doesn't see we're not going to work, your second option will be Henry Nix. Yeah. yeah. Which one thing I do want to say, I spoke some profit on to Henry Nix. For years they've had concerns about, you know, a thoroughfare. And that's not the concept on this project. I think they had conversations 15, 20 years ago. I don't know how long it's been. And that you know, we're going <laughs> is that another one? Okay, we keep going back to your time of office before. Do we? Have to clean that one. So what we're talking about here is enough for no more. Is enough for two cars to uh, safely <clears throat> traverse uh, east and west on that road. Also on that road, Terry, I think you'll find that you talked to Dave the staff about there. I was, I've always thought there was right of way on that road. Now, some of the property owners says there's not, but I think if you look at the books, 
There's right. very detailed minutes back, I mean, at, <coughs> a few years after I came to work here, maybe maybe it was 10 years ago, um, where all that was researched, all that was, and, and there was a lot of opposition at that time, but of course that's been but they a number were of years well, this page, uh, this road. end is paved down to the city of Lyon. The city's got this end paved to the city of Lyon. Then the other end's paved out to Chimley Lake. Right. So it's just a little dirt section in between there. Okay. All right. Well, that'll be your second. <coughs> right. Okay. All right. District 2. Commissioner Hawthorne. I have, from number one, Sam Craven Road. Okay. I had it on so-called list that has been going around the county before, since before my time. So, uh, all the residents there keep, you remember that one too? <laughs> that, that's your fault as well. So. <laughs> all the residents down there say that they've been installed in. Don't mind, I'll ask you a question. I've, I've had several folks as well make mention Sam Craven, uh, and this is more for staff. Um, as you're coming, I call uh, up Sam Craven, you're heading up to the paved road and you're staring at Hogan Lumber. Um, when you're coming up, there's a, we're gonna need to sh do some shaving yeah. uh, so that, that as you're coming on to, I'm just thinking ahead here. Right, it's not this exactly. Right. Um, that's something when we go, we need to look at that as well. So, all right, Sam Craven, which is the current uh, dirt road, uh, let's go ahead and get a bid for uh, paving that. Number two, I have Bonnie Pearl Lane for resurfacing. Bonnie Pearl resurface. All right. Number three, if I may, is um, the rest of AC Dorsey Road. Half of that road was paved several years ago. Uh, the other half on the, on the east side of Lockridge. West side. East Lockridge. side is not paved. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. East on the east side is not paved, which is about a half a mile. Yeah. And, and I want a baby high Well, no, no, it no, turns off that's that one ties, that's EB road. Right? That ties right into Steve Lewis. Oh, it's just been been paved and right. makes all that a, a, a whole thoroughfare. It'll make it easier to thoroughfare. Well, now you got a lot of traffic on one big thing. Paved to dirt from that. Right. Now, one thing, folks, that, you know, those in the audience, you know, us going out, we're going to get the data and the information and the cost of these roads. We may not financially be able to do all of these next year but we're going to get our data so i'm just trying yes. to all right good all right district three district three is stanley nix which is uh, already on the books to be done it's just uh about to finish it up i think uh i think the contractor's about ready to start up there is that right they our, I think our intent yeah. was to, to try to grade it this time and then try to pave it next year, which is, that's fine with me. It's a, getting pretty late to start opening one up. Yeah. So uh, anyway, it needs to be done. The next one to mine, I think Dave is already on top of this one, is Hawthorne Drive for resurfacing. I think they're already looking at some numbers on that. It's like 0.33 miles. It's, it's just a subdivision that's uh, coming all the pieces. Busting up. Busting up. You can even see where the power company crossed the road when they dug the, uh, uh, the laterals across years ago. Uh, and then my only my only grading road that I would like to do next year is the uh, FM road, which is just 0.3 miles of Kellum Valley. Dave and I have already looked at that. It's, it's just a little ways up there. Uh, a lot of people use that. That's a shortcut from from Gerard Road and and from Kellum Valley Road. Grading only. Grading, grading only. I mean, it's just it's just point three miles. Right? Well, it's just getting it prepped. Yeah. For the prepped. That's something the county. That's one that the county can do. Okay. And uh, I've had I've had some calls on Hester Road, but I'm going to have to do a little bit of research out there and see. That could uh, that can wait. Okay. That can wait. And see, Greg. Two of mine's already on the books to be done nearly, so I'm not asking them for one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Commissioner Bryant. Yeah. Oh. Whoa, is that your list? Yeah, I'm always there. Wow. Oh, That's no, the yeah, joke. <laughs> before, <laughs> before I get to the I had a, I had a phone call. Right by your house out there on that business. I've got a complaint about the uh, white line on the right side <clears throat> in the town.
town that there is no white line no more. You can't see like, uh, which I mean, you can see the edge of the road. I'm like, I think I'm a low upper end. Well, there's hardly any on any. asbestos road. There's hardly, there's not any white lines on well, Somebody anywhere. complained about they couldn't see that I haven't been down in a while on my ass. Well, I can tell you this. I know you know this, 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 this is, this is. <laughs> That's in both. It's both theirs. Um, I, I'm not going to miss We made we messed up. We had an opportunity. We should have wiped the road. Yeah, well, I agree with that. I agree. And that's been some years ago. I understand that. I traverse it every single day. Uh, I promise I'll pass that along. We can get staff just a while. I don't know if we can even put them. They're talking about passing a school bus. Of course, I know it's early in the morning. It's still dark at 7 30, and I'm trying to see and can't see the edge of the road, you know, without the. There is the a lot of you know, traffic so. on Asbestos Road, and that cuts through Joe Black Road. There mm -hmm. is yeah. a ton of yeah. traffic. And they're heading on for Alfred at 75. As well. Those people on Alfred at 75 are using that to go to the Yona School. They're having to go to the, to the Yona School over there. Yep. Well, a lot of folks. And I've noticed just, that they are flying through uh, Babe Ruth's first wife's old home place. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, if you want to stay after the meeting, I'll, I'll share you. I'll tell you that's, that's that deep curve right past the uh, rec department on the left. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, yes. the Dukes. Yes, we've had it we've had over the last 40 years since that curve. So my yeah. crew's been working on Joe Black Road. You get your boat run over up there. Yeah. We don't want to there. On my two roads, I want to look at it to see what it would cost to repave Cedar Holler Road. Repave Cedar Holler. And repave Salty Woods Trails Road. What distance? You know the length of those? Yeah, well, uh, the Salty's 1.03 and Cedar Harbor, I'm not sure. Okay. But, you know, I just price it and say. Right. And, hey, and then uh, the ones I just want to look at, which we prized it last year, bring up Joe Franklin Road again, the estimate we got to see if we can do anything, maybe we can possibly prep it, get it. I don't know if we can do anything with it. I'm just, you know, just look at it again. And then y'all gonna laugh, but uh, up there at Dandy Lane, uh, I'm not talking about the whole road, I'm talking to the top of the hill where the shop goes to the Helen. If that guy's going to put the motel in, and I know he's going to have to pave it, now would be a good time if we can get some right away. If we can, I'm not saying we're going to do this one either. Just, you know, see what it would cost. To, if we can, the property above it said they would give some too. So if nothing else, we could just get to the top of the hill because that's going to be a, you know, once they get that hotel going, that's going to be a big well, tax. So. From, from, from where the hotel's the road in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the county. Yeah, from, from the, the hotel. The road, the, yeah, but the, the hotel's got to pay for. 75 up to their property up to their and property. i'm talking about going to the next piece of property at the forks there where you go to left to the helen or terry sam's place is. yeah and that's what i'm talking about just right there where the forks um, uh, right there might let me ask you a question if it can be done have we learned any information regarding the hotel and the plans have we heard anything the last couple of days i haven't asked Not the last couple of days the last conversation i had with uh, uh jerry elkins and helen is they're not going to issue a CO until that road's paid. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm just saying just look at it. Yeah. All right. That's what's right. Will we allow them to take the side grass and take that road? Yeah. Like down south. We, yeah. Yeah. we got to stop that. We, yeah. you know, We've had the hairdine go with the hairdine go with the mule on that one either. Yep. Ooh, it came in handy. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. They know what we're talking about. That's all I got. All right. Mr. Mountain, if you and uh, Mr. Ken Jimmy will work on that list. We will do that. Get some information in the coming weeks. We will do that. And we'll come back to the work session at a later date and see where we're at and how much money we got. All right. Um, moving on to the ranges. I lost myself. Uh, Mr. Hamby is unable to be with us this evening, so we'll move on to item six. Discuss renewing the contract, uh, Park and Rec's Department Concessionaire Agreement uh, with complete comfort. Uh, Mr. Wiley, uh, Mr. Joe, you have to do that. We've been pleased with it, Mr. Chairman. We've, uh, uh, Dennis and his crew, been out there for all of our tournaments that we've had. We've only got really two locations there at the park the gymnasium during basketball season and the one outside on the hill during baseball season, softball season. 
uh, based on softball two tournaments, obviously <coughs> the biggest draw who had uh, the 20 outside county teams come in, so it was a, a good time there. But, uh, you know, we estimated we'd bring in about a thousand, and the, the total I've got is 770 770 dollars and 25 cents. That's for the last Six, 12 months. That's this November is from last December year. of last year right. through July of this year. They have not opened in the fall because we don't have anything at the park going on that would benefit them bid. Like this is the point that our bid, it didn't cost us. So that's what we've had so far uh, since we opened, since the first contract was <coughs> in the first last year. Um, just ask you when we put this out for bid, do we have any other bidders? No, sir, we did not. And actually, we did it twice, did we not? And, and this was the only company that uh, did. We did have one other, I think, ask about it. Uh, came in and, and sat down with everybody. They were from out of, out of the area, I believe. Is there a concession stand down at the uh, soccer complex? There is. Do they do it there too? They do not. We all we have there are practices okay. and um, the soccer games. Most everybody in soccer brings their tub full of fruit and sports drinks. So we found that soccer just is not beneficial unless you're hosting a big tournament. Okay. And all they did. Part of our problem in bidding it out was we had no history to share with these vendors as far as you know how much the revenue had been on it. So there was just so little interest with that. And um, Joe is asking to renew the contract for a two-year period. I'm just throwing that out there if you read his agenda request, it's for a two-year period. We'd like to go ahead and do it for two years because in the original agreement it says we could be extended for two years. And that would give an opportunity, obviously, from now to next year on the current uh, concession stand we had and then possibly into the, when the new complex is, is open, we'll have that complex open to uh, get a little bit better history and know what's going on. Right. They pay for all the drinks. I mean, it's, you know. They handle everything. They handle everything. From everything. the purchasing, supplying. Correct. We have no staff doing anything. Correct. They, they clean the bill and they do it all. Correct. We do, well, all, all we do, they've got a key and they've got a, an extra for, for their storage areas and stuff. Uh, and honestly, during non-basketball times, the concession stand there in the building, we use it for all of our stuff that we may need. Uh, like during football, it winds up <laughs> housing a lot of football equipment because kids are trying stuff on, but they're not in there again. And then the concession stand, because it's separate on the hill, uh, doesn't affect us at all with baseball. Okay. So it worked out fine. Only thing I got just make sure if we go with these, if we get to a new current uh, insurance certificate. This one dated last year. Mm -hmm. yes. So much stuff's ran out. Yeah, all that's what came with the original yeah. bid package. So, uh, is he going to, uh, is he, will he be the concessionaire at the new location? If we go for with a two year contract yesterday, he would be there through December, on the end of November of 2019. And the hope is that when we open that complex in February, March of 19, <coughs> we'll play on it from then until October or November, you know, that year, depending on what the weather does, that's our goal anyway. Uh, consent, gentlemen? Yeah. Okay, consent, agenda. Uh, yeah. All right. Joe, thank you. If you have any questions, Mr. Chairman, I won't be in town next Monday, but if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll be glad to answer you. Well, thank you. Any or anything, we just place on the consent agenda, so hopefully it's yeah. simple. Thank you, gentlemen. I have a five to six year old teams to draft tonight. Go get her done. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item seven uh, discuss ratification of the contract for <coughs> removal and disposal of the Southern Disaster Recovery LLC. This is a brief staging area agreement with the CWC 10 LLC. Mr. Murphy, you gonna read all that? Yes. Sure you're yeah. read all that. Lunch, breakfast will be served. <laughs> Basically, we're here just to ratify a contract with Southern Disaster Recovery and the staging site with CW10 LLC. Uh, this is for our debris removal from Hurricane Irma. We uh, implemented our debris management plan and did our uh, con uh, bidding based on the emergency declaration. We had two companies to uh, provide bids for debris removal, one being SDR, the other being Patterson. Uh, SDR had the uh, lowest average cubic yard cost at 775 a cubic yard. 
and uh, we chose them as our uh, debris removal contractor. Uh, currently, they've been operating now. They've got about two fifths of the county done. I'm sorry, three fifths of the county done. They've started working the uh, uh, what we're calling Zone Two, which is 115 to 129 South, 115 way, uh, East to 129 South, the uh, uh, Road <coughs> area, and then the Goat Neck Road area, Duncan Bridge Road area, on their first pass. Do we have an approximation of how much yet that has been picked up? Yeah, I do, I do not have that number. I know that the first uh, the first week, the lot over there off Appalachian Parkway was pretty full, so they finally brought a track hole in and started piling that up. And hopefully they're going to start burning this week over there on that site, depending on the Forest Commission approval to do so. All right, well, we've received course EPD approval, all yes, of that. Sir. Yes, sir. Our T's cross dies are dotted. Yes, sir. Those trailers that they're hauling on most, pull behind trailers, how many cubic yards do they put in those? Uh, I think they're measured out at uh, 30 cubic yards. 30? 30 cubic yards. And so that we're, um, and then the, the, the debris site monitors bait, give a percentage when they bring their ticket in. So they do a percentage on what that is. Is that, you mean when they bring a weigh ticket in? They, did they weigh this? They don't weigh it. It's just estimated on what, how much is in the trailer itself. So they'll look at a trailer and say it's 100%. Nothing's ever 100%, but it's anywhere from, it's averaging anywhere from 70 to 90% full. Now, because under the, uh, money, I don't know that it's going to be cheap as No wonder they're driving new trucks and putting them in the Did, uh, you might have said, I wasn't listening if you did. Did this company bring all their employees or they hiring local subcontractors? They attempted to hire local subs uh, and could not get in to work for the, the amount of money that they were willing to okay. pay. Okay, I just wondered. Yeah, the, I think some of the local subs was wanting $14 a cubic yard. Uh, their contract is only seven seventy five a cubic yard, and on average, the like in Houston, Texas, and South Florida, they're only paying like a five and a quarter a cubic yard. Really? Why are they asking so much? Then? I I have no idea why the subs were asking for that much. Well, okay. I just wondered. A lot of subs are busy already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it's been it's been very difficult to find uh, companies to come in. We've had a few come in here. People call, you know, yeah, call about right. It. And we call sent them. all that to them and asked them to contact those okay. locals, but they couldn't get them in that price range okay. that they needed. Some of the, uh, and they've had a difficult time finding subs to come in here and work because all the, sure all the, uh, you know, between some of them even going over, you know, south into Puerto Rico to do some work. Right. So. Right. Been very difficult. The, the big crew we got working here now, they're out of South Carolina. Okay. The ones so they're that not the whitefish. <laughs> All right, you know about that. The Puerto Rico contract, what you're talking about? With two employees. Those are two. Oh, that's a, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was a <laughs> No. <laughs> that's oral. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Um, now, and because of the federal declaration um, and reimbursements, uh, share of the group that uh, what we will be anticipating, uh, what we'll be getting back uh, sure. in re recoup recouping our funds. Yes, the maximum amount of the total that White County will be responsible for is 15%. 75% will be paid by FEMA, 10% by the state of Georgia, and somewhere with that, within up to 15% is what we'll be responsible for. All right, Mr. Lyons, for us to find them. That's going to be a nice farm when they stick part of that pile. Yeah, they're going to. I go by there every day, two or three times. That's a big brush pile. Yeah, I'd love to burn that. I'd just like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and just to let you guys know, they'll be doing an air curtain burn, which they'll be forcing air into the pit and burning it fast. So there'll be. There'll be some smoke, a little bit, but it'll be limited to what normal. Well, it's in an open place so there. There's no reason not to go over the wheel. I remember to burn tires. So, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> they're not going to burn the pile. You're saying they're going <laughs> to dig a pit and they're going to take that debris and move it into the pit and, and control burn it so yes. we can shut it off at night. Yes, sir. <coughs> um, originally, we were going to um, uh, 
chip it off. Originally, the EPD was going to require us to chip it, haul it to a uh, landfill or to a somebody that would take the chips. And we worked with EPD and Forest Commission on getting a burn, which is cheaper for us per cubic yard. And so the folks in the audience know that this is material. This is wood and tree material. It's not. It's not wood. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not metal. It's not tires, as some commissioners would like to. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Um, we just need to ratify this. Yes, sir. It's just okay. Consent. 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 All right. And uh, David, to you, your staff, and uh, Dave and Jimmy, um, from emergency management. I, know, I think we said this last month, uh, a few weeks ago, but um, all your folks went above and beyond, <coughs> worked your tails off, especially a lot of locations had no power. <coughs> Just as usual, once they showed out in a great way for the citizens of White County. So um, I know words don't mean a whole lot in this situation, but really, please, please convey to your staff. Uh, thank you very much. All right, moving on. Item 8, discuss the amendment to the White County Flood Plain Management Ordinance to reference updated flood insurance study, <coughs> flood insurance rate maps that are effective January 5th, 2018. Mr. Sell, you have... Okay, we got a letter from FEMA, uh, September 22nd, 2017, says that a, uh, in accordance with the National Flood Insurance Program, uh, we've implemented proper measures according to our ordinance, and then a new flood insurance study and flood insurance rate map have been completed for the community. The new study and maps will become effective January 5th, 2018. Uh, by that date, the Department of Homeland Security's Federal Emergency Management Agency Regional Office is required to approve the legally enforceable floodplain management measures of the community and adopt in accordance with Title 44 Code of Federal Regulations, Section 16.3. Our code comp, uh, currently matches or addresses all the concerns in 60-3. So really all we need to do is change the date and, and take over with the, the new maps that become effective January 5th of 2018. And there have not been significant changes according to the, that letter uh, in either the study or the map. But we will have a meeting with uh, GEMA and their consultant and the DNR and FEMA folks on November the 28th with our mapping folks to make sure that we got the current map or the, the new map that will go into effect January 5th. Okay. So all the areas and all stay in the same pretty much just to update. Pretty much. There might be a couple of properties that will come out of the, uh, the floodplain, but there's not significant additions. But we'll make sure that we got all that uh, clear on that November 28th meeting, which will be right there at 10 o'clock. I mean, this is kind of through, yeah, through the office. All right. Good agenda. Good see agenda. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on to our discuss upcoming board appointments. Uh, board of assessors three year term uh, expire December thirty first. Um, just in here. Um, if I recall, we did have. Uh, uh, <coughs> Mr. Glover yes. asked for reappointment. Mr. Glover has asked for reappointment. I have not received any other applications for that that board appointment. Okay. Yes. And those you see, there's three seats on that board, and each one of them are at every three-year increment. So one, and one, and one, so on. Uh, consent. Consent. Mr. Glover. Consent on uh, Mr. Glover, Shanda. Okay. And then uh, on the building authority, we have three appointments uh, for terms varying one, two, and three years. Um, I, I didn't have anything else in my package. Do we have any applications? I received one today um, from Mr. Muse. Is that right? Am I saying the same right? Attended a few of our meetings in USA. Oh, uh, oh, that's the fellow who um, 
I'm sorry, that's not professional me saying quite that way. Mm -hmm. But that's the guy who does the computer stuff and or websites. Yeah, marketing. You know, Muse Solutions. No, his name is Musica. Um, I think he's Martha's uh, accountant. Yeah. Anyway, I'll send that to y'all tomorrow. Okay. The one that I, I did get today, it was in my box this afternoon. And then all the others that I have spoken with, whose terms are up, um, are, are wanting to be reappointed. So. Will you just email us all that information? I will, absolutely. We can we'll address that in the, at our next work session. All right. And last but not least, uh, under our library board, Mr. Humphreys here, but uh, we have a posed appointee, Miss Susan. And I, I will debate. Okay. Uh, if I, I'd have said that, it'd been wrong. If you, so I, is, I, I would say debate. You just spill it instead of debate. Yeah, I'd have said debate. 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 <laughs> anyway, um, she's a retired educator. Yes, she has been serving up as representative for the Board of Education, and with them dropping their funding, basically no funding, no representation. And so, what we're doing is asking to increase the Board of Commissioners' representation and keep her on. I know that I had heard the word that the school board was cutting their funding. What does that actually cut out to your budget? Five thousand dollars. That was for materials for children. Well, that's not enough. They didn't have a seat in the first place. Sorry, yeah. you don't have to say that. Yeah, that leaves my face. Oh, God. <laughs> e -W -I -N. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll make it short, sweet, and simple. Consent. 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 Thank you, John. All right. Oh, boy. My work in the Yeah. Yeah. Item 10. We're doing fine at this point. Start spending money. Um, I have a little fun here. That's kind of good. Day. Sitting on the same front row in there. Yeah. Uh, item 10. Discuss replacement of road department vehicles and tractor. Dave Can Jimmy, Public Works Director. Uh, I believe you've got three items for us to discuss. Oh, thank you. I'm not sure if I like that. Oh, no. <laughs> we saw the money. <laughs> hey, that was an old boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Um, back in budget time, we, we, the Bureau Department asked for about $160,000 for two new tractors. Um, since then, we've had some uh, circumstances beyond our control. We've had um, a dump truck uh, lose a motor, and we had a crew truck get in an accident. Um, so what I'm, what I'm what I'm here for is, is I'd ask you about 160000 and um, with what I'm asking for, it kind of brings it up to like, what, 210000 That's a $50,000 uh, change. If I can explain that change to you, um, the, the New Holland tractor, um, it's, it's, going, it's, it's, it's a 13-year-old tractor, and if we um, if, if we can trade that in, we'll get six thousand dollar trade in for that tractor, okay? And we got state contract pricing uh, for another tractor for about uh, forty one thousand, so we can get that tractor for about thirty thirty five thousand. We don't really have to bid that out uh, to the state contract pricing. So that's just approval to be put on the cassette agenda for next week. How many uh, irons is on this? Uh, new haul on this 2004 tractor. Wait, hours. Oh boy. Um, that's got that's got a lot of hours on it, sir. Um, um, 13 years old. I've got all the information in here except for hours on that. Do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's see. I, I don't go by my they don't tractor. I go by hours. New Holland. Uh, 1663. This is for a mower, right? Okay. 45, 45, 
4583 hours. 4583 hours. Okay. okay. I did have that information. Okay. Um, so this is a mower, bush hog truck, or pull bush hog? That's going to be a pull behind it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Got a pull behind it. Tractor bush hog. Yeah. Bush hog. Yes, sir. Got a bucket on the front? No bucket. No. So did we just buy a new tractor two years ago? Or was that the one with the side of my mm -hmm. About one well, ten years ago. No, no, no. I mean, you know, no, we did. Our newest one is a, is a 12 New Holland. <coughs> That's the side arm when we bought yeah. it. Off. Okay. What is this one? 70, 70 horsepower is this one. 70. The proposed one? 70. 70. The, the new one? 70, yeah. Mm -hmm. That tractor, that tractor doesn't have a lot of hours on the ground. How old it is? Is that a camp tractor left over? Is it a camp tractor or open station tractor? Open. The, the, I'm sorry, the, the new one will be in uh, cap. Cap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the existing one, the 2004, is open. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. And what's wrong? What's wrong with it? The 04 besides shot. It's just, it's just, it's just old, sir. Um, uh, when, when, when we mow, we, we use three mowers at one time, and then we go another section for three mowers, and then we have a, a, a two backup mowers. Okay, so that's why we needed two. We need an, another uh, side and another rear. Okay. Um, we're trying to keep it where they're all enclosed to keep the dust out, get it more safer for the employee. Um, and talking to Hall County, Habersham, and uh, Lumpkin, they, they, they purchased uh, these uh, the water tractors. So what kind of problems are you having with this new hall? Okay. I wouldn't be worried about the dust. I'd be worried about the yellow jackets and the hornets. That's what I'd be worried about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, uh, apparently, if it's a 2004 New Holland, it's never done anything but pull a bush hog. So. Yeah, we, 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 we put some money into this, too. You know, um, we, we, have to, we have to get a better line of tractors. Um, we, we have, I'll tell you right now, we've got a, a 1978 Ford. Um, we got 2004 New Holland, a 91 Ford, a 95 Ford, a 7 John Deere, a 10 John Deere, and a 12 New Holland. Are you using them, the 78 and the 91, or are they just sitting down there? The, the, the 78, the 78, we, we did, we, the, the Ford, the 91 Ford, I'm sorry, the 78 Ford just got uh, in an accident, so that one can't be used. That was hit by a... Um, uh, Garbage truck. We filed a claim, but we can only pay seven hundred and fifty dollars for the thing. So, oh. okay. well, but it's a good backup. It's still a good piece of equipment. Yeah, yeah. But, but they're not going to pay as much for it. Oh, we're still working on that. So my thing is, going to make you lose the on a new Holland that you want to trade with. If it's still useful, nothing's wrong with it. Why can't we still I use mean, it? Yeah, we're talking about older tractors are sitting there. We're replacing some of the later ones. We got to still just keep it and use it. We got another tractor there. Keep what the keep the 04 the 04 New Holland and replace the one that and the 78 that just went down. It's gone. It's gone. Let the, let the 04 replace the 78 and let's buy possibly a new one. That's what I think I'm going to hear. That's what I'm going to Six thousand dollars. We get we get nothing for the old one. We, we get six thousand for this. For the other one. Yeah, that's right. what we're saying. We're saying keep that tractor and then buy one, possibly buy another one. Can you still use the, the two, 2004? I think that's able to quit. Yes. Yes. Still yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. My, yes. My, 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 my question is turning into a comment. I think we're at $6,000. I think we're giving the tractor. Well, yeah, we are. That's what I think. Well, can it be used? John, here we go. Can we go deals to see what they bring on the good deals? Excuse me? Has it been uh, put on good deals to see what they bring on good deals? No, that, that was just for at, at, at a... At well, you know, they're going to they're gonna trade you and they're going to give you $6,000 for that credit and they're going to turn around and set it for about $9,000. They're going to clean it up and set it and make about $2,500 for a credit. That's good for them. Might pay, you yeah. know, but it ain't good for us. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, you know something, I, I'll be more inclined to keep the old four and just look at, if we're going to buy one, just buy the 817 outright. 
I'm, I'm just trying to be a team player with. No, I understand. But we're getting, getting but rid of the old stuff and getting new stuff. I understand, but we're trying to get you. A, we're trying to scotch you with an old one to replace that '78 which went down. And '04 is only 13 years old. Okay. And we've got a history of running stuff to the wheels fall over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, no and if it's still running, no reason we should. is the motor still strong and is it still running? We, we've been putting money into all these tracks, but yes, it's still a good tractor, and that's why we could get six out of dollars for them. They're just all old tractors. But yes, we can we can keep that tractor if that's what you want. Yes, sir. On the regular boat? On all of this? No, that one. Or do y'all still strong enough you want to send it to the back? <coughs> but just the tractor is all we're talking about. We're going to put it on the one. No, we're going to put it on the dressing one more now. I'll just try to keep that total down. Understand. No, and we understand that and appreciate that, but. I'm just thinking like the road, 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 road the next in a few months or whatever, we're going to say, well, we lost it. Seventy eight tractor when we're one tractor now we'll have to buy another one. So why yeah. don't we just keep the new hauler if it's still workable with the bush hog. We keep doing a little light stuff with it or whatever we need to do with it, maybe. I agree. I mean, it sounds like we just had one got run over yeah. and destroyed <laughs> and we're not replacing it, we're replacing one that, that runs <coughs> running and working. You want to just do a regular boat on just buying the Kubota outright? Or you want to consent to it? Is Kubota the only thing doing the uh, go deal? Con do go contract? John, John Deere had state contract price for the $20,000 more for maybe four, th four, four horsepower more. We couldn't really get apples to apples. And once again, try to save a little bit of money. Oh, yes, I would love the John Deere. Oh, John Deere was $20,000 more? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> Try to get close to apples to apples. How about the warranty? Are the warranties similar? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Well, we just built up. Yeah. We haven't spent anything the last couple of years. Right. Now the full power. Can they keep the other ones? Mm -hmm. Are we going to get some other bids from the voters or are we going to just deal with this? Well, that's, that's a state contract. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you got yeah. state contracts on police cars and we get them just as cheap from other places sometimes. So that's true. Well, we don't get them on the state contract. Have we, put, have, we put, have we put out for bid information on this size tractor? Just no, no, because it was state contract. But I can call other dealers and, and I would like to do that. All right, let's do this. Let's move on. Regular vote. Get the information for us by next Monday. On a 2017 tractor, we'll leave the road four. We'll be buying it outright using the 2014 splots. And we'll do a regular vote. If you don't follow me, they are. So does that make sense, guys? So if we can go out and get, get us some information by next Monday, we'll do a regular vote. Okay. okay. Next, let's talk about the uh, the uh, crew cab that was crashed. And actually, how's Brian feeling? Is he recuperating from the soreness? He is. He is. He just got some shoulder issues. Nothing happened to his thumb. He's got something wrong with the shoulder house, but he's going to physical therapy now, but he's doing good. For those who don't know, we had a county employee who was driving this particular truck for referencing. Uh, was coming in, coming north, uh, crossing Highway 115 yes. at the bypass, and a truck pulling a boat, T-boned him, correct? And uh, totaled out of the truck. So, I wonder if he hadn't got hard work the way to do it. Yeah, the very world space was the steer. Yeah. My son saw it. He was, he was back there watching all of this. So it's gone, and we got uh, ten grand, ten thousand one hundred fifty-seven dollars twenty-four cents from our insurance company, correct? Mm -hmm. That was last hour deductible. 
I don't there, the other guy. Yeah. Right. They are, the way that this will work is ACCG handled the claim. Then they were subrogate that with the insurance company that was at fault. We may get, we should get a check back for the $2,500 deductible that we paid. So is, that, is that standard policy? Yes. I mean, they have to go through this? Any insurance company I've ever worked for, that's how it, that's how it would work. Well, ACCG is going after, yes. they're going to go after the other guys. Yes, and then of course, yeah. you know, they are, okay. they're also, you know, they'll also be seeking, se you know, separation with his workers' comp claim and the whole nine yards. So that number will actually probably be more like 12600 once we get that check back. Okay, yeah. I understand that. I have to go buy me a yes. truck like a wreck for $10,157 is what I tell. What model truck you can't do it. Oh, okay. my. 2004, 2005, F250. Yeah, yeah. 2005? Yeah, yeah. They're just going to give us $12,000, $10,000. Wait, how many miles do it have on it? It was a high mileage. Yeah, um. I can't remember, but it was. 143 or something like that. I need one. How many is your guy through? 595. I spoke about the one you drive. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still driving that one. You're talking about right. All right, you're asking permission to bid a replacement for this truck. Yes, sir. I think we can, we're going to need a new truck. Yeah, we're going to need a new truck. I just disagree with what they're paying us for the one that we wrecked. Okay. I'm just sorry. I'm, I just think they're, I just think they're lowballing us on our red truck. Well, no, Green, that was our insurance company. That was ACCG. It was a diesel truck, right? Yes. You guys for a diesel truck? Four wheel drive, okay. 254. Yeah. You're, still the <laughs> You're on the board of managers over there. Drink it up. We're All right. Changing no, we're right. changing our world. Guys, go out for a bit. Okay. Um, for a placement. All right. Now, sharpie pencils. Here we go. Talk about the dump truck. Okay. 19, 1981. Um, Nope, 1994. 1994. 1994 dump truck that we used for um, shoulder building, uh, all kinds of debris uh, that we would use with uh, two teams out for, for, for getting the job done and everything. Um, the engine absolutely just uh, blew. We, we spent a little bit of money to make sure what it was and uh, we're looking at probably eight to fifteen thousand dollars starting just to put a new motor into that. Okay, and we got some front axle issues, some other issues with it, and I just don't feel um, that we should put that much money into uh, 1994 beer. Um, we went back and forth with this so many times with different mechanics, with different companies, and this, this, this is where we ended up where it's not worth and we could we could sell that truck for parts i had a couple people looking at it we, that can help go towards this also um, um, right now we have just one one dump truck which we use for shoulders and uh, uh another one that it's 1981 it's, it's pretty old too we have we have a lot of old stuff, old equipment then we also have our spreaders that we use for gravel road and stuff. Was the uh, salt spreader available? Was it able to hook up to this truck? No. no. We we have we have three three spreaders um, that are made for for spreading gravel, and then we have uh, two small dump trucks that we use for small small things, and those that's what the plow goes on, and the, right. and the new spreaders. And then we have the old eighty one, and then the this one that blew and then the other one. Uh, the last time we bought a dump truck was right before uh, those doctors left. We bought, uh, was it two trucks and we took the body off of one and put a new spreader on one of those trucks. And we 
do. Yeah, Something like this. Yeah. We bought, I, I think I'm, I think I'm found a good deal on a used one. We found two good deals on used trucks. We bought those trucks. We took one off, took the body off of it, and took it and had a new spreader body put on it. I think, was it yellow or was it one of those trucks yellow? Like yeah, we yellow. Uh, and the other one was red. We were both on Max. We went to both Max trucks. I believe that's right there. We, we priced used trucks and this is just not it's just not paying off to, to get something used to have to put more money into it so, um, you know, we, we, we've done a lot of research on, on, on this um, well I just like one like a dump truck bigger than a bar truck that's for sure <laughs> you know, and I didn't make that slap towards you, but you think you were people. Did they have 300,000 or something? So we can get some thick metal polyurethane and just put it in the back of the dump truck and put a sump pump down in the back of it and try to do a fire truck. Yeah, well, you can try that. Look at what we've been doing for years, sir. <laughs> oh, we asked them on one hand to. I, I'm, I'm just tired as y'all are, but this is something I mean, we've got to have. I mean, we ask them more and more every year on these roads. I mean, we are doing a lot of road work. And just, they want to know, what kind of price are you the truck, man? I mean, that too, that, is that high? Or? I don't know. I ain't never been able to that before, does what I get in my life. I've always had to buy used stuff. I ain't never had a new truck. Well, what you, let me ask you, you have, I mean, um, we all got areas that we know a little more about it. Than that. Guys, what do y'all like better? Max or freight liners? Uh, Max, I'm fine. I don't have Max for dump trucks. You're going to do dump trucks. We had a nice guy come in for a demo. Nice. Uh, is that price, is that, is that pro, who was that price on the Max 3? Who was it through? That was, um, was that through Horace Hannah Dallison and Gainesville. Uh, that was my question. It was the Gainesville. Uh, what they're what he's asking here is to go up a bit, and so it'll make it official. So, so what about uh, we still have the ability to either turn it down or not? What about maintenance on these trucks? I mean, do we we, we can pull all that maintenance in in our so we get people yes, that, that yes. would work on either one of Mac or Freightliner? Oh, uh, Mac, 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 yeah, it, it's still mine. Mm -hmm. it's really most of these are going to be out of warranty. Yes. Guys, why don't we go up for bid and see what we've got so we know <coughs> what we're dealing with for sure. Then we compare warranties to what we're now and we can make that decision. Um, we stand on this dollar amount. Uh, how, how long a bid process do we have to go out on? On both of the on both of those items you talked about bidding the crew truck and the heavy dump truck, both those would require advertised seal bids. Okay. Um, a two advertised. week period. Advertised. Yeah. All right. So advertised. All right. <coughs> then when you get those in, we'll bring them back at a later meeting and we'll cross that bridge figure out where we are. And by that time we'll have an update on regarding our SPLOS funds and so on. All right. Well, our, our attitude goes south we start talking about spending money, don't we? <laughs> Thank you. Wait till end this on a high note, Dave. All right. Now we'll have a little fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Ms. Shannon, what uh, What are you showing as far as next Monday's meeting? Okay, we're going to have um, all the minutes that need to be adopted on the agenda. We'll have a proclamation for uh, White County Farm City Week. Uh, Clay Pilgrim from Russian and Company will be here to present the uh, FY 2017 uh, audit report. Then on the consent agenda, you'll have um, renewing the Park and Rec concession agreement, ratification of the debris removal and disposal uh, contracts in the debris stadium site contract, the amendment to the floodplain 
um, ordinance. Uh, Warren Glover's uh, reappointment to the Board of Assessors and uh, the Library um, Board appointment. Mm -hmm. And then on the voting agenda, you will have the land use uh, issues of Mr. Love and the Chessers. You'll have your, are we gonna vote on the spring road paving before they go out to bid? No, we need to walk to bid. Let's go out to okay. bid. I didn't know if y'all wanted to vote on that list and yeah. then, but okay. And then, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll have a voting item for the uh, building authority board appointments and the tractor purchase. Okay. And I believe that uh, Mr. Handy is going to be here to present the yes. squash report and then of course Vicki will have our finance report. All right. Mr. Bryant, Mr. Bidger, anything else? Mr. Bryant, Mr. Bidger, anything else? You know, there's one thing that uh, we talked about uh, earlier right there that you might want to consider looking at uh, <clears throat> when we did the uh, land use, uh, we didn't set up any fees or anything for appeals or anything like that, and I know that. Uh, our consideration right there was that uh, we knew that there was a lot of people that had land that was zoned that they didn't they didn't even know it was zoned and they they didn't know so we knew that we were going to have to make some changes because it was based on the tax records and it was not necessarily on what it was being used at so we've been kind of leaning it with uh, our land use uh, heels and everything but I think that sometimes we have um, appeals to us that are similar to the ones that we had here tonight when uh, I think that we need to have our our staff look into uh, maybe setting up a fee for those and then if we we can still waive the fees if we have a special situation but one that's we have grandfathered in. one that has needs to be grandfathered in but if we have some that uh, obviously people are going to uh, you know it's profitable to them to do this then we need to set up a fee for that <coughs> I think we need to have our, our staff to look into it and see about setting up fees <coughs> for these appeals well, I think we are starting to see a lot more about all new transactions um, I would like to see and kind of piggyback what Mr. Goodger was saying, I'd like to see what our surrounding communities and the other municipalities are charging um, to go through the process because I believe we're probably one of the few that currently don't charge anything. And there was a reason for that. All right, we knew this was a process, it was a new process uh, when the county enacted land use, but um, we're starting to see some new transactions. I think we're starting to we're starting to grow outside of the original purposes. Well, I know on a side note, we discussed this two, three, four months ago. We need, we had about the square footage. Of houses. You have houses and stuff, you know. We need, I'm telling you guys, we need to look at that look at some, one way or the other. So. They're gonna start stacking them. Yeah, I'm not gonna let them talk about that over. I mean, I hate to do it, but. Yeah. Well, uh, next work session, uh, by request being made up here, let's discuss the uh, subject of tiny houses. I don't know if that's the right term, but that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Home and garden or do it yourself, somebody's doing something. Um, uh, and um, Mike, if you would, send us out. I know you've got some data regarding uh, maybe what other surrounding communities are doing or have said. Um, well, it's surprising what you find when you start talking to other communities about what's going on. Yeah. Some of them believe that. We'll send out the we'll send out the okay. I've yes, had a, a few questions about what our meeting schedule will be the next meeting cycle. Um, the work session would be um, normally held on November 27th, which is the Monday following uh, the Thanksgiving holidays. And I just needed 
not that anyone has expressed any kind of preference or anything like that, but folks are starting to ask for the next agenda cycle what the meeting dates will be, if we have any idea with that. Thanksgiving will be on the 23rd. Um, yes, we have work session the 27th. Um, now, what we may do, because that is that given week, let's move up uh, any request from staff to be, you know, we normally say on the 22nd, which is a Wednesday. Wow. Let's bump that a little earlier, because I know yeah. folks should be going on vacation. So, uh, what do you suggest, Monday the 20th or yes. the 17th, which is the Friday before? Monday the 20th. Okay. Call me for that, too. Thank you, Bush. Yeah, season November is not really hot. And then, of course, with my land you use, use advertisements, I have to know if we have any of those. Will we have? We'll have those on the twenty seventh. Okay, and I understand that there are the planning board is hearing some things tonight. Okay, so we we'll we know what we're one good thing. Go ahead and put that in as a uh, um, that'll be a work session and call meeting on the twenty seventh. <coughs> And uh, now, one thing I'll say aloud, I know we're going to be having, um, where are we on our, uh, sending our bids out on the Yonah Preserve, Preserve uh, ballpark comment? I asked Mr. Stover for an update. He was supposed to send me today. I have not seen that. Um, because I know once we get to the month of December, Everybody's going to have yeah. a busy time, but I'm going to go ahead and reiterate from a previous meeting we had. Um, and our board's goal is to have not only bid to you guys to have us have the opportunity to bid to uh, possibly address the bids prior to Christmas. So uh, I'm just looking ahead here. Where I think uh, and I speak for the board. Where we would really love to pull that off because once you get past December 15, you're not going to get anything done. Everybody take, checks out for two weeks. So, Mr. Stover, did you email him or call him? Or? I I emailed him last week. And oh, okay. I didn't see that one. So I, I didn't copy y'all. Okay. I emailed him and asked him for an update on a project status on all our projects. Oh. Uh, and I and uh, I heard back from him this morning, and he said he would have me an update today. I have not seen that. Okay. And Sam, as far as December fourth, the same time, just a few more days, and let's see what we see shaping up. Whether just we're going to do a call meeting on the twenty seventh of November, if that December fourth would be necessary. Since we know we're going to have another call meeting on or before the fifteenth, because of Young Preserves bids coming in, so I'm just. Looking ahead here. Um, what else can we beat the ground? Um, I board, okay. Just uh, I just want to get permission, maybe from the board, just to explore LED lighting for the gymnasium at the park and rec. It's not that Joe and I have talked about it. Uh, the new, I know we were up at the new gymnasium high school last week. They have, they have the LED lighting there. You can really, really tell the difference. Uh, the cost saving, you know, it's of course money up front to do it, but the cost saving I'm hearing is, is there, and those things will pay for themselves soon after installation because of the heat factor and, and the power. And the, uh, just interior lighting? Yeah, yeah, just interior. In the gym. Well, and I know I can share with you, I know we've had some projects through G5 right. where. I think it was World Congress Center. I forget. <coughs> uh, the agency funded some of those new lighting, mm -hmm. and they're on like a 10 year payback, but the investment pays for itself in 10 years. Mm -hmm. I like some to say so much on electricity. Yeah. yeah. To explore that to see. Like uh, long for those lights to come on up there. No, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we've had issues in the summertime up there, at this, mm -hmm. especially this last summer with the AC. There's so much heat up there, and these lights we've got up there now put off a lot of heat. So. 
and one of the few things we need along the city of Cleveland about. City of Cleveland, and I think the school board, we all sent letters to the state no. saying between those two intersections it needs to go to 45. They listen like a sack of salt. So that's and why I'm going to take the board member down there tomorrow and uh, if one y'all will go down and come to about 65. <laughs> 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 you get a text about that time. <laughs> All right, folks, we're, we're done. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>